and we are live. You already know who it is. My name is Mike Kyle, aka the Fantasy Vulture. I have over a decade worth of fantasy football experience and I've continuously competed for fantasy championships over the course of the past eight seasons. Let's make it nine in 2021. But enough of me. I'm here for you on today's episode of the FV Show. We are going to continue our 2021 NFL Draft Rookie Profiles, breaking down all the incoming offensive players through the lens of fantasy football. Get you guys primed and ready for your Dynasty Rookie Drafts and as well as your Fantasy Football Drafts in just a few months, getting to know some of the rookies who will be available to you, not only this year, but for years to come. Up next, Ohio State and Oklahoma running back Trey Sermon. So if you're excited for this video, be sure to hit that like button down below. Also, smash that subscribe button so you never miss a video from me. I got like 30 videos coming out over the course of the next 10 days, breaking down a shit ton of rookies. So stick around for all those. And last but not least, you can follow me on all social media platforms at FFVulture. A lot of cool content coming down over there. And check out the website FFVulture.com for some premium fantasy football packages. But without further ado, I'm ready to go. This is my fifth video being recorded today, so uh, let's just dive right in to Trey, Sh to Trey Sermon, shall we? Let's roll. All right. So, things that I want to talk about here. First off, I remember watching Trey Sermon tape last year, and I was stunned how good he was. Like, legitimately, his highlights and some of his tape is so damn impressive and then he transfers to Ohio State from Oklahoma and he isn't seeing the field whatsoever and all of a sudden they give this kid his opportunity and he takes over in the second half of the year so actually we're gonna I'm gonna pull this up on the side right now um, just kind of have some of his Ohio State stats specifically pulled up but I just remember watching him and I was like, this dude is uber talented. He is just, he's, a, he's physical, he's quick, he is just a pure athlete, like the complete package of an athlete. And just everything else after that was wildly impressive. So let's go over some of his measurables real quick. If, let's see, thank you. So Trey Sermon, he's 22, six foot, 215 pounds and ran a 46140. And again, just I'm I'm baffled that he didn't see the field to start his career at Ohio State. Just kind of run through like his carry numbers per se. 11, 13, 12, 9, 10, and then the big doozy here, 29, 31, and then he got hurt unfortunately uh in the national championship game versus Alabama. But it really was just jarring that this dude transfers in from Oklahoma and he had a pretty good career at Oklahoma. Um, are we not loading player profile? Thank you. Um, like 2018 in Oklahoma, uh, he had 947 rushing yards and 13 touchdowns. Like this dude has done everything uh, in terms of like on the ground. Like he has had success on the ground. The only thing with Sermon is that he's not really a pass catcher. And that sucks because if he was, he could be great, like universally great. Like if he added, if he added that to his game, I'm very interested to know what the conversation around him would be going into the draft, because that is like the one area I think where he lacks. You look at some of his numbers and like he just wasn't utilized. Now did he catch some passes? Yeah. But the most target he's ever had in the season was 20. That was during his freshman season. And then you go 16, 12, and 19. So not really utilized. Now that being said, he was catching about 75% of his targets. But even still, like it's not enough work to be extremely viable in today's NFL. Like that could change obviously. You know, we saw Jonathan Taylor during his last season at Wisconsin really take that leap as a pass catcher and get more and more volume, kind of based around offensive scheme more than anything. Uh, but I like knowing that Sermon can catch if he needs to. He maybe he just wasn't utilized uh, in that way. So things that I would love about Sermon is just the combination of size, and speed um 
it's actually three things. It's size, speed, it's size, speed, and power. Um, this dude just balls. This dude just fucking balls. You're watching some of his highlights right here, obviously. And his ability to one, burst through the hole. Number two, take contact if need be. And then his tier two speed, like once he gets past that first level, is it's wild. Like, they're a perfect example right there on that run. He get, hits the hole. Doesn't have, to, doesn't have to break tackles because there's no need. Um, and just dominates once he gets to that next tier. Like, how? Can I, I want to watch this again. Actually, I'm, I'm going to rewind this. Like, this is what I'm talking about. He bounces outside and he's just gone. He's gone. It's not fair. It's not fair, right? You know, the thing that makes him impressive I, is normally if you are somebody that size, again, he's 6 foot 215, you're more so just like a power running back more than anything else once you get to that point, but no. Nah, see that cut? That cut? That ain't no fucking power running back. That dude's a fucking athlete. Um, and so for that reason, I have Trey Sermon listed as a combo because of his ability with his quickness and his speed, but also because of his strength. Like he is just a really, really well-rounded running back in that way. And again, the pass catching is the only thing holding him back. Now, in terms of his best season, uh, 164 carries. This was his sophomore year at Oklahoma. 164 carries, 947 uh, rushing yards, 16 targets, 12 receptions, 181 receiving yards, and 13 total touchdowns. So pretty well-rounded campaign from him. And again, like that's actually one thing that I'm kind of looking at this again and I, I like, is because of that year at Oklahoma, his junior year, where he only had 54 rush attempts, he also doesn't have a whole lot of mileage on him either. So that's just something to really, that's something interesting to think about, right? You know, we are so used to some of these guys coming in and having seasons with, seasons with over 200 carries. And his are actually relatively low. You look at 121, 164, 54, and 116. Um, it's really, it's just, it's not a lot. It's not a lot. Now, obviously, because of the fact that he is a bit of like a more bruising style back, like he can take hits and bounce off people. We'll see if he's able to hold up, but regardless, I mean, now you're looking at the Ohio State highlights and this dude, it's just, how is he not on the field to start the season? And then he just takes off during the uh, during his last two games uh, at Northwestern, I'm sorry, North, versus Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship, where he set the Big Ten Championship uh, single game rush leader, and then also versus Clemson, where he had 193 yards on the ground and one touchdown, two touchdowns. Like, my, my goodness, and another just incredible run here by Sermon. So, I'm pretty much all in, like, and I really like the value that you're going to get Trey Sermon at, because he's not one of the top three guys. Um, like, there is a legitimate chance that because of the way that the draft is, like, currently laid out, how you have, like, your top three running backs, you have your, obviously, your slew of wide receivers, you have your slew of quarterbacks, you have Kyle Pitts, you're going to be able to get Trey Sermon at an absolute value in your fantasy draft because of just the overall talent in this draft in particular. And I actually started thinking about this for a lot of the running backs. You know, it's, yes, we have it pretty much broken up into like two or three tiers where it's tier one, tier two, and then tier three. Um, but that just means that you're going to be able to get the tier two guys at a really great price comparatively. Uh, to some of the other premiums that you might pay for the other positions uh, or the earlier running backs as well. My comparison for Trey Sermon is pretty simple. Uh, it's Leonard Fournette. Uh, Leonard Fournette was a guy coming out of college, uh, could could uh, catch, but you know wasn't his wasn't really like his thing. Well, wasn't the thing he was known for, and really is just that running back that is just this combo of size and speed and just power right i think sermon's less of a power running back compared to fournette but by and large i think just generally they're very similar to each other in that way and just there is an example like that hurdle of the athleticism that sermon has and 
again, breaks off in that second tier and just kicks ass. Just fucking kicks ass. So that's going to do it for Trey Sermon, running back out of Ohio State, all from Oklahoma. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button down below. Subscribe so you never miss a video from me. What else do we got? Follow me on all social media platforms at FFVulture and check out the website FFVulture.com. Last but not least, leave a comment down below your thoughts on Trey Sermon. I would love to hear your thoughts on this insanely talented running back and maybe the most underrated running back, I think, uh, in this class, like by, by far. Um, anything else? I think that's it. Thank you again so much for watching. Remember, remember, people come and go, but fantasy championships are forever, and I will see you in the next video.